Yesterday marked the two-year anniversary of the most tragic episode in our nation's history. You are correct, sir. Yes! Worse than World War I, II, Korea, Vietnam, and 9-11 combined. Oh, the humanity! A breaking and entering of the Capitol building. Are you retarded? Oh, and they gave out medals, by the way. What the fuck? It's not a rhetorical question. Are you retarded? I'm Jazz Braganzo, and this is What's Next. Hey guys, Jazz Braganzo here, another episode of What's Next, your daily dose. Hope you guys are doing well on this Saturday night. Of course, this is the weekend edition. Two years. It's been two years since the most tragic, infamous story of our lifetime. More so than World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, 9-11. You know, the breaking and entering of the Capitol building by a group led by Chewbacca. Yeah, two years. What have we learned? Well, we've learned that you have some Republicans who are willing to stand up for the 200 plus that are still in prison against their will. No justice, no jurisprudence. And then, of course, you have the leftist media and the Democrats who've been running around saying this is the worst tragedy since, you know, since Thanos snapped his fingers. But what have we truly learned? Well, we know from those who have common sense that this was all bullshit and garbage and nonsensical trash. And then, of course, you have the truly innocent who were affected by this, including one woman who was innocently killed because she decided to protest. But you wouldn't know that, would you? Because, of course, Dementia Boy was giving out medals to these so-called brave cops on end of January 6th. Let's take a look. This comes out of Washington Examiner. House Speaker drama overshadows January 6th ceremony marking the two-year anniversary. House Democrats had a remembrance ceremony for the officers named uh, harmed in the line of duty on the two-year anniversary of Capitol riot, while congressional reporters remain transfixed on the fourth day of the House Speaker's race. House Minority Leader Akeem Jeffries and former Speaker of the House Nancy Dried Up Vag and Seahag Pelosi commemorated the services of the officers with a moment of silence Thursday morning. Quote, as a result of the events of January 6th, the lives of five heroic officers were lost. No, not one police life was taken. And uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. 140 officers were seriously injured that day. Many more will forever be scarred by the bloodthirsty violence of the insurrectionist mob. We stand here today with our democracy intact because of those brave and valiant officers. And that was Hakeem Jeffries. Pelosi, who at times appeared emotional, dabbing her eyes with a tissue, added, We will always carry the memory of their family members in our hearts. Our tribute is also to those who suffered psychologically and otherwise protected our democracy. U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sitnik, who faced physical altercations with the riots, died that day at the riot, after the riot from a stroke. Yes, he did not get it bashed in the head with a fire extinguisher. He died of a stroke per D.C. coroner's office. Gee, it's amazing what facts will tell you. Officer Howard Libinger killed himself on January 9th of 2021. Yes. He was not killed at the Capitol. He took his own life. After working on a fallout from the riot almost nonstop, Officer Jeffrey Smith, who was injured in the riot, killed himself several days later. Two more law enforcement, uh, law enforcement officers, Kyle Freetag, Kyle D. Freetag, and Gunther Hashida, killed themselves in the following months through the connection to the events of January 6th. Isn't, you know, it's, it's not really that clear what connections they could be but interesting one does have a stroke and the other four happen to mysteriously bump themselves off the Washington Post reported that authorities drew no connection between the riot 
and Ashita's death. During the January 6th committee's uh, public hearing, officers testified to the trauma that incurred during the riot. Quote, never in my wildest dreams did I think that as a police officer and a law enforcement officer, I would, and pretty much isn't the same thing, I would find myself in the middle of a battle of a war. Officer Carolina Woods said at the June hearing, I'm a trained to detain a couple of subjects and hail no crowd, but I'm not combat trained. And that day, it was just hours of hand-to-hand -hand mortal combat. McCarthy is staring down 20 members of the House, but he already gave the order for the metal detectors around the House chamber to re be removed. The detectors were placed in added security following the tragic Capitol riot. But we go from that to this. One of the true tragedies of January 6th, Ashley Babbitt. Breaking, uh, breaking. of course, this was at the time. Ashley Babbitt's mother arrested outside the Capitol. You murdered Ashley inside the Capitol. Now you're going to arrest her? One onlooker said. I did not murder her daughter. One officer replied in front of the crowd of people. The mother of Ashley Babbitt, a woman killed. Uh, the woman killed in the United States Capitol uh, by U.S. Capitol Police on January 6th was arrested outside the Capitol on Friday, two-year anniversary after her daughter's tragic death. The footage circulated on social media by streamer Woke Society's Mickey Withholt had been seen handcuffed and taken into custody by multiple police officers while onlookers protested. Ashley, Ashley Babbitt's mother arrested at the Capitol. They murdered her daughter two years ago. This is the regime. She was supposedly arrested on jaywalking. This was Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene with you know, Ashley Babbitt's mother. Right now. First of all, our condolences to you on behalf of everyone at Right Side Broadcasting and of all Americans. We, we are very, are, you're in, remain in our prayers, not just now, but forever. Um, what would you like to say to the media watching or and, and to the, the American people watching right now? I would like to say that this was a protest, not an insurrection, and the mainstream media needs to stop pushing that narrative forward, and it, at this point, that should be a libelous comment. Amen. My daughter was a proud American patriot. She served this country her whole adult life. She um, 14 loved years. God, loved America, veteran. loved her family, and came to um, D.C. to hear Donald Trump speak about you know, a stolen election. She felt like that was her last time to hear him speak. Little did we know that'd be her last time to hear anybody speak after she was murdered by a careless, reckless Capitol Police officer, Michael Byrd, who should have been fired two years ago for leaving his little weapon in a public restroom. I feel like the Capitol Police need to- And he should be serving 30 years because of this. Which I did not know until my daughter was publicly executed. I think that most of America does not know that the Capitol Police Department works under it with impunity. They're not subject to FOIA. They're not subject to transparency. They are another arm of uh, Congress and they don't answer to an external review like every other police department in this country. My daughter was an amazing, energetic, independent, powerful woman. And I miss her every day. And I'm here because Americans do have the right to protest. It's your right as an American citizen to protest. I would also like to say to Nancy Pelosi, this is not your public, this is not your playhouse and is not your private domain. The, the surveillance cameras were put up to capture what happened that day. The American people have a right to see the 14,000 hours of footage. It's not yes. personal footage. It, this is America, this is Mar you're not the queen, Nancy Pelosi. This is America's 14,000 hours of missing footage. We have a right to see it. That was the purpose of the cameras. We have political prisoners in jail in America, not in some third world country. We have political prisoners to this day in solitary confinement being denied the due process that they fought. Most of them veterans fought for their right to be in this country to, to exercise their First Amendment and the right to protest. And they are being denied the rights that they fought for for this country as they sit in the Washington DC jail, being denied due process, being denied adequate legal representation, being denied adequate nutrition. Um, what can you say? A mother grieves for the death of her child. It's two years later. 
and she has to live this nightmare every single day. She doesn't know if there's ever going to be true closure behind this. True closure would have been Michael Byrd getting fired, getting brought up on charges, and sent to jail for murder and serving at least 30 years in prison. That would have been closure to her. But no, no charges were pressed. And if you watch any of the video, him talking in front in, at, the, at the hearings at the time, they made it sound like he just came back, you know, from the most horrendous war ever and came out on top. <sighs> Absolutely pathetic. But then again, this is the dementia administration. Because I can be, uh, you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar that this would have never happened under Trump. And with that being said, I'm Jazz Bergonzo. This is What's Next. If you want to see more jazz like this, please leave a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.